win for you. I know one that was important, and uh, you've had a little bit of time to process it. I'm sure you'll go back and watch it and all that. But as you're sitting there now, how do you feel about the performance tonight? I feel pretty great. You know, I showed everything that I wanted to show, you know. Uh, I heard that she was the better wrestler, and I got to show that I'm the better wrestler. And uh, she's really tough, you know. So I obviously was going out for the finish, and I did not get that. But uh, I definitely dominated, and uh, I'm happy with the win. I was actually surprised with how much grappling you did tonight. I assumed you'd want to stay out of that with her. So I guess, was that just because of how things played out, or did you go in there thinking, no, I'm going to grapple a little bit and prove a point? No, I mean, I was going to go out there and do whatever happened. You know, I know that I'm the better fighter. I was going to be dominant in the striking, dominant in the wrestling, dominant in the grappling. Um, and I was definitely more str uh, I had way more strength than she did. Um, and I felt that once I got in the clinch. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy with it no matter what. You know, I got to showcase how much wrestling and how much grappling I can do. Um, you know, from defenses, I know she threw up an arm bar. Um, was able to defend that and end up on top. Uh, and then, you know, continue to put the pressure on and, and all of that from there. I saw a lot of people praising, you know, seeing that we, we see this hungry Macy back, this aggressive Macy back that maybe we hadn't seen. Do you feel that was there tonight? And, and what was it that, that got that back? I do, you know, I feel like that was something that uh, I've always had that like fire in me, you know, I've always wanted to be like, I'm going to go out here and dominate finish and beat these girls up and walk through and wreck them. Um, Obviously, tearing my leg, tearing my ACL, and then and then taking a loss, you know. Sometimes your, your light gets dim a little bit. Um, but, you know, sometimes my mom sent me a post. She's like, when it gets dark, that's when sh stars shine the brightest. So um, I definitely got to uh, reignite that light and let it shine tonight. And, and uh, yeah, the old me that was, it, it never left. Uh, it was just a little bit hidden, but it, it's definitely starting to shine through a lot more now. Is it funny to say the old you, considering your age? I know. I'm like 23. I'm like, yeah, the old me. <laughs> Back when I was like 21. Back when I was, you know. Uh, the, the, uh, the hug afterwards. Uh, I guess what was, who, who was that number one? And, and uh, I guess tell us about that moment. To be honest, I wanted it to be my mom. <laughs> um, but they didn't get to be out here. They were going to drive out uh, from Colorado, and they got hit with a snowstorm at 3 a.m., so they did not get to drive out. I had all the tickets. Dana hooked me up with some tickets to, to be able to have them here, and um, I didn't get to have them here. But that was the next person that would be the closest to being a mother to me, and that's Sherry Riley. Um, she is my high-performance life coach, and she is a mentor. She is my second mother. She is honestly the angel that has been suit to my life um, and has imp impacted me. I might cry. <laughs> she has impacted me in so many ways. Um, and I will never stop like sharing that with everybody because it's like um, as many times as like everybody's going to be like, yeah, 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 we get it. Like you, you love these people. But, but until you have gone through, you know, the ups and downs and the, the things that I've experienced in my life, um, you'll never understand how impactful this woman has been on my life. Um, and I'm very thankful for Eric Thomas who introduced me to her um, and brought such an angel to my life. That's awesome. And I guess, not to go too far into it, but is it just about, I guess, helping you deal with maybe the doubt that might have crept in with everything that you were dealing with? And I mean, I know you've had to face like abundant negativity on social media and stuff like that. I don't read that. Good. I don't read that. Good we're good. But is that not negativity? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, is that what it's? I mean, because it seems like it's like a life-changing thing. Is that what it is? Is like self-belief and that? No, I mean, I know I'm going to be the best in the world. It's just you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes things get a little bit more difficult. You know, there's like 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 you said, I'm not old. <laughs> I'm 23, uh, so I grew up in the UFC basically. You know, like I've had uh, this is my 13th fight. And uh, I had one amateur fight, and then I went to pro, and my whole goal was to get to the UFC. So I knew that going through LFA and going through the Contender Series was like to get to the UFC. So it's like putting a bunch of pressure on myself. So I literally, as soon as I got to the UFC, that was my first ever injury. That was my first ever loss, my first ever concussion. So I had to learn all of that on the biggest stage in the entire world. And I did um, back when I, like, Back when I fought Alexa and, and when I hurt my knee and all that, yeah, I read comments. I did. <laughs> and that's what I learned. I don't, my dad taught me that. He's like, don't read below the line. And after that, I took it to heart. You know, I don't read below the line. Um, I post and I forget about it because 
there is a lot of hate in this world, but I feel like most of the people that shine the hate are the people that are dealing with stuff internally, and that's why I feel like they need exponential living in their life. They need something happy. Um, so for me, no. I mean, there was a lot of negativity at first, but we're on, we on a different level now. We're going different places. That's awesome. Last thing for me, I know you said you didn't really have a name necessarily mine, and you'll trust the UFC and your team, but I guess, what do you see your path now at this point? I mean, is it, hey, we got to jump in and contend as quickly as possible, or is it like, hey, let's, let's develop a little bit. We are just 23 years old. We got time. Like, what do you see as your path from here? Uh, I tried to live my life by that quote, shoot for the moon, even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. So when I first got to the UFC, I was like, I was 20 years old. I'm like, let's go for the youngest champion. Obviously, uh, we have passed that date. I am 23, I will be 24 in May. Um, so rather than uh, pressuring myself and being like, let's go as fast as we can to the best, I'm going to be the best. But how I get there, I'm going to enjoy every moment of this journey, and I'm going to make sure I don't skip steps. I make sure I don't pressure myself into, you know, in taking a taking um, taking a chance that I shouldn't take. Um, but at the same time, I have never turned down a fight. Every opponent that they have ever offered me, I've said yes to, um, and that's throughout my entire career. I've never said no. Um, so every girl that I fought and and have beat or lost to, I feel like that's part of my process and it's part of the journey and I know that there's a reason um, and I do trust the UFC in that sense because they haven't, they haven't given me something I can't handle yet, you know, and I'm very thankful for that and, and thankful for the opportunity, so we're going to see what's next. Hi, Macy. Hi. I, I noticed you have something written on your hand. I was wondering if you could kind of tell us what that, on the other hand. Oh, again, let's I have, have a lot. Both. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can you tell us what um, so that? before every fight, I, I kind of, you know, I like to put on my hands what, you know, like it's going through my heart, going through my mind. Um, 10 and 2, that's my record now. Um, I have a, a Psalm 1834. It's a Bible verse about um, God blessing your hands, you know, preparing them for battle, preparing them for war. Um, I have a beep cancer because <laughs> I, I try not to swear too much. Um, and this is for Angie, uh, Coach Joey Rodriguez. I know that um, everybody's heard a lot about uh, Angie and, and her situation with being sick right now. And uh, instead of asking people to continue to support, I wanted to thank everyone who has already supported um, because I know that Mike Malott fought recently and he already told everybody about, you know, how, how she's fighting um, a, a tough battle right now. And there's a GoFundMe there is, so anybody who wants to donate can donate. Um, but I feel like the MMA community has been able to just show how much, how like incredible we are, you know, like being able to support, being able to come together, even though, you know, we're fighting each other, but then everybody's coming together to fight fight the true fight, you know, and that's, and that's helping people who need help when they need it. Um, so, yeah. Is that the person that you, right after you won, I noticed you pointed towards your wrist. Is that who you were speaking about? Yeah, I was talking about Angie. Um, I really, you know, we all wanted Joey in our corner, um, but right now we got to be in his, you know, we got to be in Angie's corner and that's what we're doing. So, um, yeah, I wanted to, I tried to do the purple in my hair because that's the awareness color for, um, lymphoma and, uh, yeah, I just tried to really support as much as I can and, and show um, show some love. Thank you. Yeah. I know you said you didn't want to put too much pressure on yourself and you didn't want to rush to the top or you wanted, to, but that being said, when you say you'll take whoever they throw your way, isn't there some part of you that wants <clears throat> to sort of plan that out and not let them put something that maybe makes more sense for them as opposed to for you that makes a fight, that makes that, seems better for you than what they might want to throw out at you? I feel like what's better for them is for me to continue to be successful. You know, like they're trying to build someone up and I'm going to be someone that they're building up. So um, the answer to that is a yes and no question <laughs> because I know that I have a team behind me and a, a people who are going to help me answer when, when that opponent comes. But at the same time, like I've said, they've never given me something I can't handle. Um, and at the same time, I know that there is a plan on how to build someone. 
you know, build a career, build a star, and that's me. You know, I'm, I'm coming up and I'm going to continue to build and I'm going to continue to rise. And if something isn't smart at the time, I will let my coaches um, and everybody decide that together. Um, but that's not something I'm going to be like, yeah, no. Yeah. And I'm guess, a fighter. We, we take fights. <laughs> and I guess this is sort of a, a two-part question. You know, when as you start having success again, when you first came on the scene, you know, you were thrust, like you said, you, you started your career practically in the UFC. It could be very easy for somebody to get a big head, you know, right from the get-go. So I guess in the two part, if you looked at yourself when you first came in, do you feel much more humble now? Would you, would you, if you saw the Macy back then, would you just say, whoa, calm down, Macy, slow down, or you would have been, or did you feel like, no, I liked what I saw myself doing back then? I will not laugh at your question, but I'm going to laugh at your question. No, I would not go back and change anything about who I am. I am still the same person that walked in that way. I'm still the same person that's going to continue to do that. I believe in myself. I know I'm going to be a champion. I know I'm going to wreck these girls. And it's just taking the time to work through all of the things and learning all the techniques that I need to learn. But at the end of the day, I know that I can fight, and I know that I have the heart of a champion, and I'm going to beat all of these girls. And I guess the second part of the question. There's your answer. When, when, it does, when it does get to the point where you want somebody to kind of help, I mean, I guess who helps to keep you grounded? Do you find that in religion? Do you find that in your team? When it, when it gets to the point when success starts coming your way, how do you stay grounded and who does the job of, of keeping you grounded and keeping you focused? I feel like that's a lot of people. I feel like that's the team. I feel like that's my family. You know, my mom, my dad, my brothers, my sisters my niece that was just born, like all of my family. Um, and then it's also Sherry Riley, Eric Thomas, you know, they've taught me a lot. Um, and it's, it's a combination of everybody, you know. But at the same time, it's, I know where my heart is and I know where I'm gonna go. And the whole reason why I'm fighting the way I'm fighting is because I have a why and that why is bigger than me. That why is bigger than anything I could ever achieve. And the whole goal for this, this um, career that I have is not just to achieve gold, but it's to build a platform so I can become a voice for other women and other girls and other people going through you know, tough times to be able to come out and be like, I've been in a bad position and you can do so many incredible things with your life and that's the goal. And so that's what keeps me grounded is my why. And then lastly, did you get a chance to uh, talk to your niece either right before or have you talked to her afterwards? I haven't. She was just born five days ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm going to fly out on Monday to go, go meet her. Awesome. Yep. Congratulations. Thank you.